So I'm back here again on the Rinse FM couch. I'm Talina, your Rinse FM presenter, and I am here with the wonderful Taylor Elaine. Hello. Hi. I would love <laughs> you to introduce yourself. Um, well, I'm Taylor Elaine. I'm a DJ based here in London. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's me actually can i just say though your fits are always Aww. so on point i was like literally forever i've always like loved your outfits and they're just Aww. and today you do not disappoint oh thanks do you know what i was like i didn't really know what to wear today i kind of forgot that i was going to be on camera yeah so I was just if like, this is you forgetting you're on camera i don't want to know what it's like <laughs> if you know you're on camera it's usually a lot a lot more stressful <laughs> so can you tell me about your first ever dj set Oh, I do remember my first DJ set. I was, it was in Dawson, but it was like, it was a venue yeah. and they had an upstairs and a downstairs. And it was my first set ever. And I learned to DJ on like a tractor controller. <laughs> and I remember like bringing my controller and being like super nervous. And it was like the opening set. And after that, I was like, I'm never using this again. I need to introduce some introduce myself to USBs and like CDJs. How did you figure out what genres you wanted to mix and what music you wanted to play out? Mm, that's an interesting question because when I listened to my first ever mix that I put on SoundCloud, it was like the first mix I ever did. It sounds more like me now than the past like seven years, uh -huh. which is insane. Because uh -huh. I think then I wasn't thinking about like pleasing a crowd or like playing out because I was just learning for fun. So I mixed everything like it, there was so it, I crossed over so many genres and then I feel like after that I kind of you know started playing hip-hop more or like dance hall more and I was like kind of boxing myself in uh -huh. without realizing and now I feel like the past few years I've almost gone back to like where I started yeah subconsciously like when I listen to my first ever mix I'm like oh that's actually my favorite. Yeah. Like that sounds, it's like, it, it was like full, a full, full circle, circle moment. Yeah. Moment, so you've got your own back as an artist by having so many genres in your roster. Mm. But I also feel like in this industry, sometimes there's this pressure to be like, oh, you have to like be associated with a certain type of genre in order to succeed. Like what's your thing? What do you think about that? I noticed that like quite early on in my career and I thought I had to do that mm. only because it's like, I guess you're you're ticking off a box. Like when people are curating lineups, they're thinking, okay, we need a hip hop DJ or we need, an yeah. you know, someone that plays house or someone that plays this. So I think a lot of DJs feel like they have to pick a box to mm -hmm. be in, to be considered mm -hmm. for spots. And I did that. I started playing like specific genres, but it was just really boring yeah to me and i do think there's some and i feel like a lot of djs now are crossing over definitely into so many different genres and i just think it's more of like a surprise and i love that that's that's what your thing is mm. it's a surprise it's a surprise like they know what energy they're gonna get surprise <laughs> exactly <laughs> and also exactly. i think i don't know where i read this about i read this about you but um i started saying that and i was like do i sound like a weird stalker and then i I was like, no, I'm meant to be doing this. This is my job. <laughs> just, I just had like an inner monologue going on in there. Um, but you basically update your USB almost every day. All the time. So like, like I get bored. Where, yeah. So where are you finding your tunes? What makes you want to be like, yeah, I want this song on my USB? I mean, SoundCloud is like my place. Uh -huh. I love SoundCloud. So I'll just be on SoundCloud. You know, they have like the, da the daily drops yeah. and like the weekly drops. I love that because they just know what you like, but also wherever I am, like if I'm out and I'm listening to stuff, I'm a, sh I'm a Shazamma. Yeah. I'll be in the club like, totally, 100%. what is this? Spot like, the DJ in the club, yeah. got the Shazam out like. You have to, because I think, especially where, if you play a lot, it's easy to have like your favorites. Mm. Cause I do that. I have my favorites in my library. There's thousands yeah. of songs on my USB and I'll have like 50 favorites and I'll find myself like going to three gigs a week and just playing those same songs. Yeah. And I just, it gets boring and I feel like you get bored of really good music uh -huh. really quickly. Can you give me three words that you would use to describe your sets and what people coming to Project Six can expect? A surprise, <laughs> always. Also, just like dancey. I don't even know if that's mm -hmm. a word, but that's like my main, I just want people to dance. Like yeah. whether you know the music or not, there's gotta be like a certain frequency. Yeah. Refreshing, yes. hopefully. 
Sounds delicious. Thank That's you. great. You said that you've obviously worked in fashion PR. Mm. You DJed at the British Fashion Awards. Mm. You looked amazing. Thank like, you. No one recognised me. Whoa. <laughs> well, you did have a whole wig on. I know. And like a whole like diamante situation. It was like people that I knew were just like walking past me and I was going, hi. hi. And, and they were going, they were going, hi. Like they didn't know me. And I was like, no one recognised no, me. Blonde. Hilarious. But fine. <laughs> So with working in fashion PR, do you think that's what's kind of led you to combine music and fashion together? Naturally, yeah, because when I was a PR, I was on the other side of the events that I play now. So like I was curating the events mm -hmm. and like inviting all the guests and working the door and doing all that stuff. And so it's a world that I'm familiar with and that I do like. Yeah. And so I definitely, I definitely feel comfortable there. Like, I feel like uh -huh. it's, a, it's a good space for me. Yeah, for sure. So you've also got a background in radio. Yeah. You started Plus One Radio. I did. And that was one of my first ever radio yeah. shows. I know, when I saw your name today, I was like, oh. I was like, I don't know if she's going to remember me. I was like, let me hold it to the interview. No, like, absolutely. I'm holding it in, like, the talk going to the loo. Because I was like, it's honestly, I've got to say this, like, for me, fangirl moment, massively Aww. that I'm now interviewing you because literally it was one of my first ever radio shows that I mm. ever did. And I remember you were so nice. I was so gassed about the opportunity. Aww. And then now when they were like, yeah, you're going to interview Taylor Elaine. I was like, shut I know. I was like, uh, full circle. When I saw your name, I was like, this is crazy. What the hell? And this you remember? Crazy. Absolutely. I said to my manager, I was like, she used to be on Plus One. She used to be on my radio station. And it was great because I learned from doing that also, like how to edit shows, mm. all of that kind of thing. Me and my friend Evie did it and it was so fun. So thanks for the opportunity. No, thanks for doing it. And that was the point really of yeah. Plus One. Like it was just something I started because I remember when I started DJing and I wanted, I wanted like guest shows on radio stations and it's quite hard and there's so many rules, mm -hmm. I feel. So I, was, I just created a space where people could just do whatever they wanted really yeah. and just like kind of get the experience and learn from it and mm. learn what kind of stuff that they want to play or what they want to do or how they want to do radio so I'm really happy yeah I'm here. really happy it's, it's so it's just mad like these full circle moments mm. but what like how was it for you running a radio station and setting it up it was way more intense than I thought it was going to be yeah. and I had such big dreams because it was just you and one other person right so it was me and my sister was helping me oh <gasps> Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was like lockdown, so like we had time. We were just at mm -hmm. home. I was like, oh my God, I have this idea. And I was like, I want a full schedule. I want a 24 7, seven days a week. And then I was like, oh, was this is actually a lot. <laughs> like, this is every hour of the day. And it was just me like doing everyone's artwork and, you know, planning the yeah, schedule. Yeah, you actually and... did people's artwork for yeah, them, didn't did you? Everything. God, props to you. And it was, I mean, I'm glad it <laughs> had some good came out of it. But I had to let it go yeah. because I was just like, when we came out of lockdown and I started working, I was like, oh, I'm Too not able to do this. But I am trying to like create something new that is that can do the same yeah. thing with like some of my residents, uh -huh. hopefully. But what's the best festival you've ever played at and the best festival you've ever been to and why? I did really enjoy Reading and Leeds last year. Yeah. That was a good. Those people are crazy. They are. They are crazy. They crazy want to crazy. have it off. Mm -hmm. And I had a great time there. And I, I feel like Reading in Leeds is also one that you maybe wouldn't expect mm. to really enjoy. I've never been. Yeah. And, and everyone was like, oh, it's a bit crazy. And I was like, crazy's good. Yeah, I like crazy. Crazy's good. Also, another one that everyone was kind of like, oh, uh, Boomtown. <gasps> I really want to go home. I loved it. I really want to go so I wish I dressed up. Yes. Everyone was dressed up. Perfect I like, oh, opportunity. I didn't get the memo, but if I play it again, I will definitely be dressing up. I'm excited for that. Boomtown. It's a good one. Boomtown's fun. So Boomtown, Le Reading and Leeds, that's the answer. Reading and Leeds. And then obviously Glastow, which I'll get to do properly this year. <gasps> what is one song on your USB right now that you cannot live without? It's going to be Lady. Lady, feel me tonight. tonight. That gets played like every single time. Perfect. Like, some version of that song is getting played. In some way or another. Mm. Your rider, what's mm. an essential in that rider? I always, incense. <gasps> Do you? Oh, I love that. Because sometimes green rooms. No, no, no. They don't, it's not nice. So if you see my incense drawer at home, because obviously I take them all home. Yeah, yeah. But I get incense on my rider, so I've got incense from all over the world. What's your favorite smell? Um, dragon's blood. Oh, I don't think I've 
got that one mm, or had that nice. one. It's really and nice. it sounds quite badass as well. Like, it is. Give me dragon's blood incense, mm. please. It was good. That's perfect. I might start copying you in the future. You know, who knows? <laughs> in your right <laughs> so I want you to use your imagination. You're going to host a festival. What's it going to be called? Where's it going to be? And who are five artists on the liner? So I think I would call it off air as an ode to Plus One Radio because oh. it's currently off air, but we'll but we back love. On it. Thank you, Plus yeah. One. <laughs> and then it will be. Where will it be? Hopefully somewhere hot. Yeah. Not here. No. But we'll bring the London vibes there. Oh, obviously. So maybe somewhere like Barcelona. Gorge. Mm. Great Put it in Barcelona, place. and then five people. Mm -hmm. mm. Kilimanjaro. My brother, Parallel. Yes. Um, who else would be on it? Lady Shaka. Stunning. Who else would I put on it? Fred again? Yeah. See, I love that you said that. Really? I love that you said that Speaking because so again. many people are like, oh, Fred again, Fred again. And I, I out myself constantly. I'm like, I love the guy. He's amazing. He's great. See? Fantastic. And Peggy Goo. <gasps> Fantastic. Because who doesn't love Peggy? Who doesn't love Peggy? Three festival survival tips. Um, hand sanitizer. Because when I went to Glasgow and I saw the toilets, I was terrified. <laughs> I didn't realize. Everyone was like, don't use the toilets. And I was like, I need to use the toilet as soon as I got there. Ooh. Terrifying. USB, just in case. Yeah, because it's so true. Because you could end up just jumping on. <laughs> you never know. Always have to have uh -huh. work in mind. And what else? Water. Yeah. That's Don't been a lot yourself. of people's answer, you know. People are quite, people on this Rinse of Heaven are quite sensible humans. You wouldn't sensible expect to. beings. Got to stay hydrated. You know, when you, when you start getting older and you realise water. Water for the skin. Mm hmm So what would be your dream back-to-back -back if you could play with anyone? If I could play with anyone, I'd want it to be a challenge. So okay. it would be... TJ EZ. Okay, how come? And hopefully I won't be embarrassed. Because <laughs> I just think he's just so he's just so techy with it. And I love it. And I I would I would love the challenge of being able to keep up. Yeah, you'd be on plays. your toes, like you'd have to keep the crowd on their toes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Taylor Elaine. Thank you. Also for giving me this full circle of crazy oh, moment. So nice. I love and I it. can uh, say that you are good at interviews. And I'm not just saying that. Really? Yes. I hope so. Yeah, you were great. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye.